Hey everybody, Marcos Viegas here with Kathy Duva, whose man Sergey Kovalev takes on Bernard Hopkins coming up November 8th on HBO in Atlantic City. Kathy, looking at this fight, was it one in which it was very easy for you to make and one that made sense, or was it something where you feel Bernard was kind of stuck in a hard place and he had no really other choice but to have a fight with Kovalev? Well, actually, the answer to both questions is yes. He was stuck <laughs> in a hard place, and he had no more options. And um, I, well, his option was to, to be stripped of one of his titles, and to his credit, he didn't want to have that happen to him. And really, there came a day when it was his only alternative. And in, from the moment I was approached by Golden Boy about doing this seriously to the moment the contracts were signed, I believe 27 hours elapsed. Oh, wow. That's the quick, is that the quickest turnaround you've had for a fight? It might have been. You yeah. know, it's not like we usually time it, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, it, you know, once you know, it's funny. We made a lot of big fights years and years ago with Holyfield and Lewis and Whitaker, and once people sat down and decided they wanted to make a deal, it wasn't that uncommon. I mean, not that the paperwork would be done that fast. There was a deadline the IBF had set, mm -hmm. and that's why that had to happen. But as far as sitting down and making a deal in a few hours, that was pretty. That used to be normal. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. <laughs> you know, a lot of people... If you want the fight, make it. There's not that no. many things to argue about. <laughs> it's very true. If you want the fight, it, it happens. Uh, you don't see that a lot right now in boxing. Yeah. But, uh, you know, a lot of fans were surprised uh, that Bernard uh, took this fight. Uh, and a lot of fans are kind of split. The one part says Kovalev's too young, he's too much. The other part say Bernard's sneaky. When this fight was given to you, were you not at all hesitant, but kind of like, ooh, this is a tricky fight for my guy? No, not no. at all. I, I actively pursued it. Uh, I, would, I had been calling Golden Boy for weeks before yeah. the day they approached me and said, okay, let's talk. Uh, it was Sergey's wish as soon as he won the title to win another one. He told me that night, mm -hmm. Sergey, you've reached your dream. You won the world title. He said, yes. Now, when can I, when can I unify? <laughs> That's the first thing he said to me. So my, my job is to give him what he wants, you know, and, and also to advance his career. And it was clear that a unification fight with either Hopkins or Stevenson was the right move for his career. So mm -hmm. when the opportunity, not that it presented itself, I was chasing after it. I admit it. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's good that you have fighters like that, that, you know, want those kind of things. You know, looking at Stevenson and really how you want to place him in the market here and grow, you know, how have you seen his popularity rise? from when you got him up until now, and obviously a big part of that is the knockouts, but what are you doing, I guess, to maximize on that as well? I think, you know, from the start when we looked at him, uh, one of the ideas was he needs a nickname, and Crusher was just the natural choice. And was that your idea? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so proud of it. Uh, we had a meeting around the table, and we were talking and throwing around ideas, and I, I said it, and then somebody went, with a K, and I went, so yeah, we collaborate, mm. and uh, it, 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 he embraced it. And uh, you know, sometimes you just you you, you have to you, you know. We talk about branding. Everybody talks about branding. Well, that's his brand. It was obvious from the way he fought. It's not like we created the brand and told him to fit it. Mm. So we start knocking people out. <laughs> yeah, no, he was doing that already. Yeah. That's where the name came from. It was kind of an obvious choice, and uh, it, it, that that and you know his. His very eloquent post-fight interviews <laughs> have, <laughs> have allowed someone to, uh, and he's he's got so much you saw today, so much natural charisma. Mm. Uh, when you find somebody who has all of that and can fight that well, uh, you know, my job as a marketer is simply to to, to take that message and, and and package it in a way that it's simple to convey and people and for people to to receive. And he makes it so easy because. I mean, his highlight reels are spectacular. He's had nine knockouts in a row. Mm -hmm. uh, ever since he's been with us, he's knocked everybody out. Knock wood. <laughs> and, uh, you know, that that is uh, it's, it's terrific. And, and he, he gets better every day with his language skills. Mm -hmm. And he is actually screamingly funny in Russian. I can't wait till he can speak English as well as Russian because we're going to have so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Kathy, do you feel that with this fight, it was maybe even better that he had this fight with Bernard instead of Adonis, given the stature that Bernard has now and just seeing his long list of who's he's fought in his career and, and knowing that he's probably going to go to the Hall of Fame, like for sure. Oh, yeah. <laughs> of course he is. You know, look, um, it would have been nice to have fought Adonis and then go into the fight with Hopkins yeah, with all the belts around. on the line. Yeah. I can't say that might not have been better, but... You, you know, you don't always get everything you want. So 
Uh, we, we, you know, we, we got lemons and we made lemonade out of it. It's working out okay. Do you feel a win over Bernard, though, does much more than a win over Adonis? At this point, certainly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah definitely. You know, looking on that night, uh, you know, what are you hoping that fans take away from Sergey that are not too familiar with him? I hope they are thoroughly entertained and they just want to watch him fight again. Yeah. That's really all you need to do. Looking at him, he just... He's like seen as like the guy that no one wants to fight because of the knockout power. And I'm just trying to think, you know, the, the type of fight that Bernard's going to fight. And obviously I could sit there and think, but as a promoter, do you sometimes go ahead and picture how a certain person's going to fight? And you go to your fighter and be like, I just have a feeling I have this experience that, you know, 20 years ago, this so-and-so did this. He's going to come out. I just have a feeling. Do you have a certain feeling about this fight? Like that? Yeah, I would never do that. No. Uh, John, <laughs> look, I'm the marketer. Um, John David Jackson, yeah, he's, he's got the feeling. Uh -huh. I, I, he, when I said to him, what do you think about this fight? He went, just make the fight. So yeah. at that point, I, I'd stop thinking about it. <laughs> My job is to give them the opportunity. Now they take it from here. Well, now on November 8th, we're going to see who wins, right? <laughs> yes, we are. And it's going to be tremendous, so don't miss it. <laughs> it's going to be a great fight. Kathy, thank you very much. Certainly appreciate it. Prior to the fight? Yes. NBC Sports Network. Mm -hmm. We're going to be on the air with a, with, a, with a show. It's going to end at 11, and the HBO broadcast starts at about 1045. So uh, and gets, you know, the first fight into the ring around 11, so everybody can see two great shows on one night. There you go. Plug it away right there. <laughs> Kathy, thank you very much. The fight happens on HBO November 8th. Bernard Hopkins taking on Sergey Kovalev here in Big Bear, California, wrapping things up for the Boxing Channel. Marcos Vegas, thank you for watching.